Okay, so let's, uh, let's gonna start. Um, so I'm happy to be here and seeing so many, I would say, family and friends. This is the typical talk that they give you to close the event. So all of you, you are looking forward to do, I would say, <laughs> the closing already. So this talk should be, I would say, easy and soft. And when the organizers approach me, they know that I, I love software architecture and so on, but they were talking, telling me about like, uh, do a more light and soft talk. So let's gonna go for that. Um, typically what I do is, uh, you, will see my, you will see my experience and my background, but typically what I do is I, I manage companies, I'm in technical teams, and I also run a consultancy. And from time to time, I try to gather, I would say all the experiences running consultancy and running uh, technical, I mean tech teams, and I put them together in a summary and I try to share it in a way that it could be potentially useful for anyone. So um, this is, again, one of these times where I'm trying to summarize some concepts. And here I'm using some metaphors, a couple of metaphors, uh, based on parenting and team sports, probably to explain some, com some concepts that you may already have heard already multiple times. But let's gonna do a revisit of the classics in a, I would say, uh, friendly, friendly way. So my name is Carlos Buenos Vinos. I have, been, I have been leading teams from technical teams as team lead, CTO, VP of engineering, and so on, from 20 people up to 300, even as a CEO. Um, and I have been running consultancies in, in different vertical sectors, Spanish companies, American ones, and so on. So I would say I'm not, I'm not as smart as any of you. I mean, I would say, but I'm, I have basically seen a lot of stuff, a lot of shit. Uh, and then this is basically what is giving uh, some experience on, on the things that I can, I can share with you. On, on the per on personal note, so I really like sport management movies. Yeah, I mean, some people like uh, Lord of the Rings, and I like this kind of, I would say, uh, topic. Uh, these are some of the, I would say, my fetiches uh, movies. There's one that is called Moneyball. Does any one of you have seen Moneyball? Raise, raise the hand. So this is the movie that I try to see from time to time. I mean, really good recommendation if you, if you haven't seen it about, it's based on a real story, but I mean, at the end it's reinventing things, uh, trying to do, you know, try to fight the, the big guys in different ways and how to do management in a, in a different way. So I would say a lot of recommendation. Phil Jackson, 11 Rings, anyone from you has read this one? Phil Jackson was the, the coach uh, in the NBA for the Lakers and the Chicago Bulls in the, I would say, golden era, in Chicago Bulls in the golden era with, uh, with uh, Scott and Pippen, Michael Jordan, and all the classics. And he explains, I would say, the details on the management of those, of those, of those, of those teams, uh, which, uh, by the way, some of them, they took them when they were not like superstars, and then they make them win five and six uh, rings, uh, uh, respectively. I have been also basketball referee, doing analytics on basketball teams, uh, playing sports teams, uh, even chess in teams. So I mean, teams, I mean, sport is always something that I, that I really like. So this is something on my, on my personal side. And also I'm father of Valentina and Gabriela, which is 10 years old and seven years old. Um, who from, from the audience is a parent? Raise your hand. It's an amazing experience. But I totally respect the people that don't want to have children because I would say it's a heavy responsibility. But it's interesting because most of you, depending on the ages of the children that you have, probably you are learning a lot from yourself. You are learning a lot of, uh, from a management standpoint. And probably you have seen mistakes that you were doing when you were younger. And now you are seeing uh, the way, you are understanding probably better your parents right now at the moment. So probably here are my findings. In order to try to use like this metaphor, is that there's a lot of similarities between what it means parenting, management, or team sports, and what and related with to of managing uh, managing technical teams. So there's a lot of I would say similarities that I would like to probably raise. The summary probably is unpolite, and probably this is going a bit uh, against your ego. I have been developer also. I mean, I'm developer also. Developers behave like children most of the time, okay? Developers behave like children, why? We work in something that for us is probably not a work, 
I mean, we really love to play with technology. In fact, some, sometimes we talk about playing with technology and not working. So we work in something, so we don't work, we play with something that we really like. So for us, it's probably not a work. Second, um, in terms of work, probably you don't have any kind of problems to work in different companies. Uh, you are receiving on LinkedIn a lot of requests. So you could be changing companies every more or less 18 months to two years without any problem. So you know that you're professionally wise, you are more or less covered, safe. You are on the side that you can choose where probably you want to go. This is probably making easy or easing a bit, I would say, your professional life. Uh, your professional life. And this is probably influencing positively also easily your personal life. So being a developer has been probably a smart choice in terms of uh, making easy your trip on, the, on life. This is obviously putting all the personal topics uh, aside. Um, so this kind of behavior, especially on people that is starting on the junior profiles, is generating an uh, environment that doesn't generate maturity effort. So I have the feeling that easy environments doesn't force people to assume difficult tasks, to suffer a bit, and to generate maturity as fast as any other people in different contexts, in different professions. Um, and on the other side, for you, if you haven't realized yet, developing software, except that it's a side project or a pet project that you can have, is a team effort with everything that it means for good and for bad. It means to sacrifice, it means to help others, it means to communicate, it means to understand what is the goal of the team, it means conflicting interest between what you want and what the team needs. So there's all of this is related to a team effort and developing software nowadays in any company is uh, associated with a team. So all these concepts we will see, I will, I will probably walk through uh, four concepts that I would like to share with you about this. Children and, um, and a team effort. The four areas where I see that we could potentially develop as developers a bit more into a team that is way more mature is these four areas. Responsibility, accountability, decision making, and sacrifice. And I will put you some examples on this topic in a way that can probably you can correlate or not correlate uh, with the situations. So, responsibility. I haven't used pictures of my, of my children because, I mean, especially on the first one, but because my wife didn't, didn't allow me, just in case. Um, on Fridays at home, we do Pizza Friday. So we get all together, and we watch a movie, and we order some pizza, OK? So from the two of my children, Gabriela falls asleep minute number five of the movie down. But Valentina is awake until the end of the movie. So at the end of the movie, after eating the pizza, so we finish the movie, and I look at her, and it's time to brush the teeth before going to sleep. But I look at her, and she looks at me, and she's like, that I don't want. I want to go straight forward to bed. But she knows that I mean it's good to go brush, I mean brushing your teeth before going to bed. So here is a conflict. It's a conflict between what she wants to do versus what she has to do or what she needs to do. So when we are confronting this situation, I ask her this question literally, Valentina, what do you want to do? I want to go straight forward to the bed without brushing my teeth. Okay. What do you have to do? I need to brush my teeth. So what are you going to be doing? And then five minutes of thinking, and she's like, OK, I will brush my teeth. OK, fair enough. This is becoming mature. This is, this is growing. Okay. And I'm mentioning this because in our sector, we have the typical well, we have the typical junior versus senior, where we talk about like years of experience and other topics. But I would like you probably to think on the junior versus the senior topic from the perspective of child versus adult. Becoming a child, an adult, so what is the maturity level that we need to face? And for me, the difference between a child and an adult, a person that is immature, um, immature versus a person that is mature, is the difference between knowing or, and doing what you have to do versus what you want to do. So how many times in your teams, even yourself, 
have, I mean, you have found yourself thinking, I want to do this, but this is not what I should be doing. In developers, we have a natural tendency to look for another new technologies for the team, probably unnecessary ones, but because we want to have fun. So a lot of push coming from the team is sometimes, especially more immature teams, are coming from this kind of pressure of always putting first what they want versus what they need. And here, probably that from the management and development standpoint, we can, we can work in multiple ways. No? From the manager, obviously, we have the one-to-ones. And probably one of the important things on the one-to-ones is trying to align the personal interests of the people that we have in the team with the personal interests of, uh, of the company. If there's alignment, that's fantastic because you are not working, you are developing together with the team. But if for whatever, if for whatever reason there's no alignment, no problem. I mean, there's for sure other companies where you can probably align your interest, personal interest, to the other ones. As a developer, probably here what I'm trying to uh, claim or probably request is a bit more of self-awareness and impulse controlling. And the technique that I typically use for developers is to ask them, so if they can ask themselves this question about, OK, this that I'm asking for or that I'm requesting is because I want or because I have to or because I need it. So the first claim probably here is about thinking on responsibility to get more uh, mature teams um, and claiming to developers that probably, uh, you will see at the end on the conclusion, we are probably not as responsible or as mature as we think. So just uh, to have in consideration. The second one is accountability. So Valentina the other day, uh, now I mean the school is off and she needs to do the homework. I mean, she has like the typical homework for summer for summertime, but she has to do, uh, or at least she needs to do, based on the teacher uh, directive, that she needs to do some kind of homework every day. Okay? It can be maths, it can be something like that. Um, at the school, they are working already with uh, pen, so they have to do everything on pen. But the other day, um, she was doing the homework, or she was supposing to go to, <laughs> she was going to do the homework, and then she came to me and she said, hey, I cannot do the homework. Why? No, because I don't have a, I have a run out of ink on the pen. They have a special pen that is uh, nowadays super modern, that is removable pen, erasable pen. So you can write and then you can remove. And then you, part of the evolution in the school is getting like this kind of uh, pen. So she ran out of uh, ink and she was like, I cannot do the homework. Because why? Because I ran out of pink on the pen. Okay. Uh, Valentina, is there any other possible solution to deliver your outcome? I mean, your outcome, your result at the end, your responsibility, you are like, accountable for doing the homework. So is there anything that you can do in order to solve like this terrific situation where you don't have this pen or you're running out of ink? Uh, I could probably go for buying another pen. Okay, that's no, but I mean, probably you are on your own. It's not going to be the case. So I mean, we need to think on other solutions. Um, oof. I have think too much already. I mean, I don't have ideas anymore. So, Valentina is experimenting this, this moment where she's, where everything has to, if something has to be done, has to be done in some specific way, and she is not understanding what is the problem to solve. She's only focusing on the solution. So, we were claiming, hey, maybe you can write it on pencil. Maybe, no, but if I, I mean, no, but on the school, they have, the, they have to be with a pen, okay? Uh, then do it with pen. No, but then I can get mistaken and then I have to, well, okay, you can do it in a separate paper and then when you finish and then you copy paste it and that's it. No, I mean, it should be easy. And we went 15 minutes on this kind of discussion. And the most interesting thing is that the next day, because we didn't bought any pen, it was the same discussion again. So accountability is the difference between what I have to do versus how I have to do it. And in this case, this is the kind of discussion that I have seen with multiple developers where or they are claiming with a specific solution or they claim that something cannot be done because they are missing X, Y, Z. So, well, it would be nice to see some kind of proactivity in terms of finding different solutions to find the different problem. And here we can do like different things. I mean, um, there's, a really I mean there's a really nice technique that I recommend not only being a developer but also being a manager, which is like the typical uh, uh, Specific brainstorming and concentration, so I mean diversification and, and concentration, which is at the end, you can, as a manager, help developers to state the problems. So, hey, create one, one pager, which is probably one document, uh, easy, I mean one, one page, write down the problem, 
write down three potential solutions that they are not the same one. I mean, it's not the same to say, well, we can use Jenkins and we can use another solution that is basically similar. No. So let's going to find three different solutions to the problem. Let's going to analyze a bit the pros and the cons in bullet points, super easy. Let's going to identify potential mitigations for the cons and let's go and give me your recommendation. So in order to avoid this impulsivity or this non-impulsivity about like, I cannot do this because I'm missing X, Y, Z, something that we can ask is, OK, state the problem. Tell me what are the two, three solutions that you have, and then think what is any kind of problem. Let's want to see the mitigations and tell me your recommendation. And at the end, Valentina decided to go with pencil and no, no, no more drama. So at the end is a reminder to developers about the difference between the output and the outcome. No? I mean, what we, want, what we want to achieve and try to think about uh, other possible solutions to get overcome the possible problems. This is an, this is an, agile, an agile attitude. Decision making. I was, um, I have been thinking a lot on if a family or a team should be a democracy or not. Okay? So probably if you think about your family and your parents, the, the answer is easy, no? A family is not a democracy. At least until you get older, no? I mean, and you basically go on your own. When you have 10 years old, basically it's not a democracy. And, it, and it's not a democracy because I would say some good reasonings, and we will come into that. Um, so I was running the experiment, and I asked Valentina and Gabriela to design if they were allowed to do the design of the menu, what to eat every single day for a week, what would it be? OK? All the week. All the week. So there's no vegetable. So there were no vegetables in the plan. There was no, you know, everything was, you know, full, full pizza, cheese, salsa cheese, and so on. So this is, a, I mean, for me, this is interesting, no? So why cannot I apply a democracy to a 10 and 7 years old children? It's because basically they are not mature enough to understand what they need versus what they want. What if, if this concept about not being able to understand the difference between what I need and what I want could also be you know, happening in our teams? What I need versus what I want. So I have seen. So I recently, I mean, one year ago, I started, I mean, I joined a company. And at the beginning, we were hiring people, and we followed the same process as day as number one. We were following the same processes with, uh, for doing the recruiting. And it was interesting because when you want to apply a cultural shift into a team, if you allow the team to carry on hiring the same people that they were hiring, there's not going to be a cultural shift. I was in the process, some years ago, of becoming CTO of a really well-known delivery company, food delivery company here in, in Barcelona. And I went through all the processes, CEO, CPO, etc. In the last interview with the developers, probably I said something that they didn't like, but they charmed me from the, they charmed me from the process. And it was interesting because the CEO was looking a revulsive on the technical team. But the technical team was the one deciding the person that was not going to be able to join the team. So it's a bit of conflict of interest at some point. Um, so it's interesting to understand that some teams, they may not be aware of what they need versus what they want if they are not mature enough. How do we assess this maturity? It's probably depending up to us. But if you are a developer, probably it's good to be aware that maybe you are in a bubble, like when you are in Twitter and you only see news from your sector and not from the opposite, uh, opposite opinion. But it may be that you are in a bubble and you are not able to take, I would say, really good decisions or diverse decisions, or you have multiple options because you are inside of this, inside of this bubble. So what is the role of the manager of the parent in these kind of situations? you need to put limits. So is it, I would say, is it 
right to put limits to the team? Now I feel that engineering people, I mean engineering leads, so engineering managers, feel that if you don't allow the team to do whatever they want, you are a bad manager. But this is not the case. So your role as a manager is try to get the best version of the team, and this sometimes means setting up some limits. Even though setting up some limits can be pissing off someone. So I expect that my children is loving me every single day, but I can guarantee you that not all the days it seems that they love me. Because when I put some limit, if they don't like it, they complain. So is this, possi is this possible a pattern that could be happening also in your teams? Yes or not? So I really like, I mean, there's multiple talks on, on, on parenting, but there's, I, there's one guy that I, I really like that says something that parents are not your friend. So as a parent, I'm not friend of my children. So my responsibility is to make them grow, becoming more mature. But I mean, I cannot play the role of friendly only. I need to set up some limits, even though this is going to be generating some frictions with my, with my children. But it's for the sake of becoming, so for them to becoming more. So in this case, what it's helping is setting up working agreements. Probably some of you, you already have working agreements. So state clearly what is a specific process to work on. This is, if you have gone to, if you go to a, I mean, to a, to a school of uh, really young people, you will see that everything is drawn. They enter into the school and they have the process, so they remove the backpack and they put the backpack on the, on the hanger and they say hello and then they go to whatever. So they have all the processes super established, super, I mean, graphically put on, 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 the, on the class in order to identify what is the working agreement, what are the protocol, what is the expected behavior to happen. And we do more or less the same. We do daily stand-ups, we do retros, I mean, we have everything visually, uh, we have the cam scrum, uh, scrum boards and so on. So working agreements here is going to help to, I would say, land what is expected, I mean, the, the clear expectation of behaviors from, from developers and from the team. And something that also helps me especially a lot on new teams is do upfront decision making uh, statement. No? So when I join this new company, I tell them, we're going to be carrying on doing the same process in order to do hiring, but the last call for saying who joins and who doesn't join is going to be mine. And again, I'm not expecting you or the team you know, to like it or dislike it, but I mean, it's going, to be that, it's going to be like that. So the last call for deciding who to join and, not who, to, uh, and, and who joins and who doesn't join is going to be my call. Maybe sometimes you don't have to use this, I would say, superpower. But if you need to do cultural shift on a, on a team, most likely you will have to use it sometimes. So being, I would say, super clear, transparent, upfront to say, this decision is going to be my decision. Or you can run the process, you're going to be generating some information, you're going to be sharing the information and your recommendation, but at the end, I could probably skip your recommendation and go on my own. So no one is lying to anyone, but at least upfront, the decision making should be removing I would say frustration in terms that if at the end I'm choosing something that you were not recommending, um, I stated it, I would say, upfront in the process. And on the developer side, well, I mean, there's probably some kind of frustration management that we need to do, okay? If a manager or a situation or a company doesn't accept absolutely all the suggestions and recommendations that you are making, this doesn't mean that they are bad recommendations. Maybe you are missing some kind of factors in terms of the decision, and you can probably ask for these kind of factors in the, in the decision-making process, or, or what are you missing in order to make, I would say, your proposals more effective. Uh, but it's a frustration. I mean, you're asking for something, or you're proposing something. I would like to introduce Go in the company. I'm sorry, we're going to be introducing a fourth language because it doesn't make sense on this, on this project. Oh, I get pissed off. Then I will look for a company that is uh, running Go. Fantastic. Up to you. I mean, no big deal. We are going away from the family and we are going to the team sports. Probably, probably one of the, I mean, plenty of characteristics in, in building teams, especially on sports, but one that I really, really like and probably is the one that I see more lacking of in general is the sacrifice. When you see, when you see sacrifice, depending if you're a Spanish speaker or English speaker and so on, it feels a bit like a really bad word, no? like someone has to die. But sacrifice is about priorities. Sacrifice is about priorities. Who is first and who is second? As a football or basketball fan of any of your clubs, which, I mean, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to win multiple championships or do you want to, prefer, do you want to not win the, championship, the championships 
but the main player to get like the MVP or like the you know golden uh, golden ball here uh, every year. What do you prefer? Hands up for the championship. Hands up for the individual trophy. I'm more or less aligned with you, so I prefer my team to win as many championships as possible. So Messi won a lot, but Messi is not in the Barça anymore. So, okay, I'm happy that I saw Messi play in Barça, but I mean, right at the moment, all the you know individual trophies that he won are Messi's, are not Barça's. Let's call this way, no. So I will always prefer to win championships and not individual trophies. So this means that the overall structure of the team, organization, and dynamics should be organized around winning championships. What is the metaphor of a championship when I, I'm giving trainings and so on? For me, when we are doing like Agile and iterations, you can do Kanban, Agile, whatever, you, I mean Scrum, whatever you want, but in every iteration, every iteration is like a different match. You are facing a different opponent. You have different features to launch. You have different user stories to launch. Uh, you have people that is on holidays, people that are coming in. You have new joiners in the team. You have people that is leaving the team. You have different technological problems. So every iteration on user stories that you need to develop is a total completely match. And as any other team, every match has to be designed specifically for the game that you're going to be playing. So you don't play the same way when you are playing against Real Madrid or when you are playing, with all the respects, the last, the, the, you know, the last guy in the list. So the, the type of game is going to be different, the style is going to be different, the players that you're going to be using are going to be different. So understanding and adapting your dynamics towards winning championships is going to be important from the management standpoint and when you are an individual contributor. So sacrifice, which is at the end about priorities, is the conflict between what I want to do versus what we need to do. And sometimes you will find conflicts of interest between I want to add a new technology, I want to do this in a different way, uh, I prefer not to work with anyone because I prefer to work alone when I'm working in a team, I prefer to you know, give me something and I will work on my own. Yeah, but I mean, this is not how everything should be optimized for winning championships. So in a team, developers, I mean, on my experience, developers, we are quite comfortable in this case. I remember like, like not having a, I would say, super hard life, but we prefer to work, I would say, the maximum alone possible. Give me the headphones, I will work on my feature because I love to work code and so on, and the less that I can interact with anyone, the better. I'm obviously generalizing, but I mean, the best, I mean, the most that I can, I mean, the less that I can speak with anyone, the better. Leave me alone with my code, and that's it. Well, but I mean, for maximizing and winning championships, this is not the case. So we typically have a priority of the things that we need to do. And in order to deliver the things faster on the top of the list, we need to maximize the number of people that is working in this thing. So if you are leading one of the user stories that are on the number one, the rest of the team should be trying to, you know, add as many people as possible. I mean, between, it's not, you know, there's no kind of limit, hard limit. But I mean, we should be trying to collaborate together in order to deliver the, th the first thing fast. We deliver the first thing, and then we can jump to the second one. But we have this natural trend of, hey, I don't want to be disturbed. I prefer to go in alone. So I would love to see a more mature behaviors where developers, typically, for example, in the daily stand-up, no? proactively offer and ask for help. And not only development. So when I'm playing with my, when I'm playing with my team, I'm developing. If I see the first task and it's remaining something to move from review to done, uh, some kind of testing or whatever, yeah, I'm a back-end developer, but I, I don't care. If I'm able to help the team contributing by testing something, even though it's, it's not my, I would say, main skill, but if I can help on testing something and moving to production, and moving to done, and then jump to the next one, this is what the team needs. So if it's what the team needs, why should we be doing something different? So proactively ask, I mean, offering and asking help not only developing, but also it could be help, it could be testing, it could be documenting, it could be speaking with the product owner, it could be doing so many things. The more that we behave in this way, the faster that we deliver the higher priority things on the, on the list, and the more that we win championships. The opposite scenario is 10 developers, 10 user stories, day number one, each of developers working in one single story. No, this is not 
I mean, with this kind of approach, you don't win too many championships. So maximizing people working in the same topic to speed up the prio doesn't, I mean, make sense. I was explaining that last week, and the first comment from the, one of the developers was, yeah, but in the man of the meat uh, book, uh, nine uh, women pregnant cannot make a child in one, in one month. Yeah, it's right. But I mean, let's gonna make, let's gonna maximize until a hard limit. And for now, we typically have a natural tendency of saying, yeah, you know what? We are too many people here, there's nothing that you can do. There's always something that someone can do. But we're a bit lazy in terms of welcoming someone to accelerate this topic. So here, interesting techniques that you can apply on the retros. I, I try to you know, remove all the dynamics from the retros and try to focus on one single question, which is, what can we do to become a better, more effective team? And all the questions go around that. And we try to retrofit the retro with KPIs that are really telling us what's going on. No? So, um, I was, I, was on a I was doing basketball analytics, and no matter if you win or no matter if you lose, when you finish the, when you finish the match, the coach sits down with the team and goes through the statistics, you know, bounces, uh, uh, triples, uh, you know, field, midfield, midfield shots, uh, one-point shots, so everything. And with this information, we basically comment, how, I mean, what do we need to improve, what do we need to change, and based on this information, we plan the trainings for the next week, and then we plan the next match. So if we have missed a lot of one-point shots, we basically need to train one-point shots um, before the next match. So combining retros and KPIs as a starting point and having this kind of question, central question about what can we do to become better and more effective is probably something that can remove, I can remove a bit of smoke, I would say, on, on, this, on this area. So for summarizing, there's a movement that is called no management. And I would say the, the main lead motif of the no management is this one. So when the team does what they have to do on their own, management is not needed. Or it shouldn't be, it should, I mean, there's no need to be management if the team does what they have to do on their own. It's easy to say, but at the end, what it's telling behind the scenes is that if the team is mature enough, they are adults and they are not children, you can just let them play, let them you know, behave properly, because they will do what they have to do instead of what they want to do. They will work, they will sacrifice, I mean, they will put the, the interest of the team over their personal, their personal interests, and this will be, like we say, fixing some of the topics that we have been discussing, discussing here. So it's as problematic as having an immature team without limits. Can you imagine, like, you know, my, my two children alone for a week at home uh, with a credit card, being able to order whatever food that they want, they will be taking pizza absolutely every single day. So an immature team without limits is as problematic as a micromanaged mature team. We agree on that. The only thing that happens is that probably you are more thinking on the second statement, not on the first one. Because in general, we believe that anyone that is helping us to, you know, uh, change a bit our flow or telling us what to do and so on, could be filled as a micromanagement, as a, as a micromanager. So here there's probably on this statement two traps. And this is probably what I would, I would like to close the, the talk here. From the development, I mean, from the developer standpoint, just a potential reminder. Maybe this is, you know, hitting your ego. I mean, it was hitting mine at the beginning. But as a developer, we may not be as mature as we think we are. So we are not, maybe we are suffering more from the first statement than from the second statement. So from the developer standpoint, we may not be as mature as we think we are. So probably food for thought and, and doing some reflection. And from the manager standpoint, we may be, right at the moment, too permissive. In parenting, they call it helicopter parents, because they are like basically floating, but I mean not acting. And this is generating some kind of problems with the, with the children. But maybe the managers were getting too permissive without having to set up uh, limits. And so we need to set up some boundaries to the team to get mature. So, some recommendations from probably topics that we have been talking a bit eclectic, but I mean, I really like the, the five dysfunctions of a team from Patrick Lencioni, is walking through different types of needs that you need to cover in order to make a team working as a real team, not as a bunch of individuals. Uh, they have like a, I would say, a working, a working book and a story, it's writing in novel, 180 pages, I mean, you can read it probably in a weekend. It's good, it's good probably if you haven't read anything about uh, sports, like taking a look at the Moneyball and, and 11 Rings from, from Phil Jackson. And especially, just here, like a personal recommendation, if you have children, and especially they are daughters, 
Uh, Brave Not Perfect is a really amazing book for parents and also for, for the children. So um, that was it. I hope that no one from you was feeling, I would say, too much attack. And at the end, it's basically, obviously, my, my opinion, but uh, built upon seeing, I would say, plenty of things as a consultant, as a manager for, I would say, the last uh, 18 months, some patterns that I, I keep seeing repeating, and I would love to see a better behavior uh, to become, I would say, more professional as a, as a group. That's uh, pretty much it. Thank you very much. Good, so we have planned the closing. If there's any question and so on, I'm going to be around, but it's up to you. Good, if not, we can just jump to the, to the closing. Thank you very much.